Welcome to our Brookside Devotions on this Good Friday morning and how appropriate that we are continuing to look at the cross. Like last time, I'm just going to read a wee part of the passage at a time and then make a few comments as we work our way through it. So we're in Mark chapter 15 and we're going to begin to read at verse 33. And when the sick fire had come, there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, Laba, Sabbathakani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? We truly are coming on very holy ground as we look at this passage today. Darkness came over the hour, over the whole land from the sixth to the ninth hour. That's from 12 noon until 3 p.m. The brightest part of the day, there was this unnatural darkness came over the land. Darkness in the Bible is normally a, a symbol of God's judgment. And this is true in this case. As Jesus hung on the cross, there was an act of judgment taking place. The judgment was coming upon Jesus, the perfect son of God. Because at that point he was taking upon himself the sin of his people. He who was perfect was now becoming the most sinful person ever. Not that he ever committed a sin, but as he took upon himself that sin. And we see there that at the end of that time he cried out those oh very eerie words. Eloi, Eloi, Laba, Sabbathakani. Even the sound of them is, is horrendous. My God, my God. Why have you forsaken me? The Jesus who had experienced nothing but love and joy in the presence of the Father for all of eternity as a son of God is now experiencing the wrath, the abandonment of God. You see, we think of what Jesus endured and physically at the cross. We think of how he was beaten beyond human recognition in his face. He was whipped on his back. He was a crown of thorns placed on his head. He had then nails put through his wrists and his ankles as he's nailed that three. And as he hung in that three, tremendous physical pain. That was only part of it. There was this pain upon his soul as he experienced the infinite wrath of God for the sin of his people. Jesus endured hell itself on that cross so that his people could be delivered. Let's read on verse 35. And some of the bystanders hearing it said, Behold, he is calling Elijah. And someone ran and filled a sponge with sour wine and put it on a reed and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come down. Come and take him down. Here we see the, a misunderstanding of what was happening. Obviously the words Eloi, Eloi, my God, my God. It sounds a bit like the name Elijah in the Aramaic. They didn't understand what was happening. They they had thought that Jesus was going to be rescued from the cross. That was maybe a possibility. And you know, today the problem is still the same. People don't understand the cross. People don't understand this point of Jesus dying as a substitute. We think in sport, if someone's injured, a substitute is brought on to able to do what they couldn't do. Jesus was dying in the place of his people. He was a substitute. Taking God's wrath so we could be rescued from our sin. And people misunderstand the cross. They don't grasp that this is happening. They don't grasp that they need this salvation. They need someone to take their place. Otherwise they'll experience that wrath of God themselves for all of eternity. Verse 37 says, And Jesus uttered a loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. So here we come to the end of Jesus' life at this point. He utters a loud cry. We know from the other Gospels that cry was the Greek word telestai, meaning it is finished. It's a term which means the completion of a legal transaction. Jesus had paid the price for sin in full. He had finished it. He had done the work of salvation. And as he cried that, the curtain in the temple was torn in two. This was a curtain between the holy place where the priests 
ministered and the Holy of Holies, a special place that only the high priest could enter once a year. The Holy of Holies spoke of the special presence of God. This is where the Ark of the Covenant was. This is where the cherubim guarded that ark. And Jesus, by his death, tore that curtain open, opening the way to heaven, opening the way into the presence of God. And so here we have a very visible uh, explanation of how indeed we can get to God is through Jesus' death and paying the price. He alone opens the door and the way to heaven's glory. He cried, it is finished, and the way was open. And that's the way you have to take. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the way that you come into the Holy Presence. Jesus is the veil that you have to pass through trusting in what he has done on the cross. Will you do that? Have you done that? Not trusting in what you do, not trusting in your works, not trusting in your religions, not trusting in good deeds, trusting in Christ alone. One final verse, verse 39. And when the Sigerian who stood facing him saw that in this way he breathed his last, he said, truly this man, was the son of God. The centurion would have seen many people die. And horrendous watching people die in suffering and pain. Dying in despair, dying in agony. But there was something different about the way Jesus died. That cry, it is finished. He didn't say, I am finished. It was a cry of victory. It was a loud cry. It was a defiant cry that the work had been completed. He had won the battle. He had opened the way for his people to glory. And so the way Jesus died, died in victory. It caused the centurion to see this Jesus was no ordinary man. He was the very son of God. The one who had come to be the saviour of the world. And so tell me, have you come to be like a centurion? Acknowledge that Jesus was the son of God, not just a good teacher, not just a good man. No one is a good teacher, a good man who made the claims of Jesus. You have to accept either he's a son of God or he's a deceiver. He is the son of God. Trust in him. This Good Friday, we think of her horrendous death. Nothing good in that. And yet it is good because it opens the way. The one way. Why would Jesus go through this? Why would Jesus suffer like this if there was another way? Praise God. He knew this was the only way. And he opened up the way for his people. Amen.